<laughs> who are some of these people that are I in just, there? I just, I just try not to violate trust. Clean. Perhaps a sip of milk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll just, I'll, I'll plead the, I'll plead the milk. Well, guys, welcome to the ultimate Sean Evans interview presented by Dairy Farmers of America. It is a cooperative of over 11,000 dairy farmers dedicated to putting more sustainably made dairy on your tables. And Sean, first and foremost, it's always good to see you. And I assume that you're excited because I'm here, but it's also a holiday that must mean more to you than just about anybody else. It is World Milk Day today, <laughs> and June is Dairy Month. So how excited are you for, for a holiday that uh, I'm sure means more to you than me? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't think it gets enough attention, you know what I mean? Like, that can fly under the radar for a lot of people, but milk, it's been uh, such a safety net for me over the years, so it's about time that we, we give it the celebration that it deserves. I can't even put a number to the amount of times I've seen you reach for a glass of milk to help cut the heat in the interviews that essentially get very hot in a different regard, but. Dairy Farmers of America is working to find ways to keep the planet from getting too hot, like using solar energy and wind turbines to cut emissions. And so I wanted to present to you these glasses of milk to help cut some heat as well. If at any time in the interview, the he's already sipping, but if at any time in the interview the question gets maybe a little too hot, you know, sure. feel free to take a sip to cool things down. We inverted the set. You, hot ones is normally <laughs> in a very dark set, but we're brightening it up today. Uh, and, and I just wanted to say thanks for having me here, and uh, I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah. I'm excited too, you know, I think we have a lot of chats offline, you know, yeah. uh, but I don't think we've ever sat down in any sort of like formal setting like this, so I'm excited. Let's go back to the origin. Crystal Lake, Sean Evans, Chicago's very own, what was full-headed hair, Sean Evans like uh, as a kid growing up? Overall, just a uh, really good experience, good childhood, good high school experience, and most of that, the constant through all that was just good friends. Then the U of I is, is the school that you're obviously so very proud of, but then the story kind of, the story of your life could have gone a bunch of different ways, and I think for a second you had an idea that it may go a different way. When I graduated, uh, there was no immediate sort of TV job there. You know, like there was no thing that was like immediately there for me. After I graduated, I went back to doing architecture tours that I'd done all the way through college, doing tours of the Chicago River and whatnot. You told me about this so many years ago, but that's something that's always interesting to me, particularly because you still have it down pat. I'm not gonna ask you to do it now, <laughs> but I've seen you just do it on command. Rewinding back to those days for a second, I imagine there were a bunch of celebrities that took those tours, some of which eventually wound up on Hot Ones. That's true. I'll take a sip to that. I haven't thought about this until this second. I'll sit with you, bro. I'll sit with you. Yeah, you're right. Tyra Banks did take one of those tours. I was gonna say it, but I wanted you to say it. <laughs> Now, as long as we've been friends, I, even pre-Hot Ones, I, I never saw the food connection. I wonder if you maybe all along had this vision of food or, or maybe it was working concessions at the Park District <laughs> that kind of got you going in the food realm. That was my first ever job. Was uh, working at the beach and selling like popsicles to kids. But no, I, I think, in a lot of these things, it was just um, like it comes to, when it comes to hot sauce or whatever. It was just all around the show, you know. Like I've always enjoyed restaurants. I've always enjoyed food scenes. When I travel or go somewhere, I like to you know figure out what is the regional delicacy in that area, and I have to get my hands on one. But it's not like I was a hot sauce guy or like they say in the Key and Peel episode, like found something I could do and built a whole show around it. It was just something I had to build myself up to and figure out and keep pace with. Even before Hot Ones, talk to me about the beginning of the complex era. You come over from Chicago just as a writer. You s helped spawn what was complex news at the time, and it was three of you guys. It was you, Jinx, and Emily, three people that I consider some of my best friends. And then here I came along as an intern at the time. Yep. What do you remember about the era of, 
of complex news, pre-hot ones, and maybe how that kind of helped transition you to where we are today. The way that I got the job is in All-Star Weekend 2014, we were supposed to do all of these interviews, right? I didn't know where they were gonna live or what was gonna happen, but it was right when Complex launched the YouTube page and the only person they had doing on-camera stuff was Jinx. And so they were like, hey, these interviews that we're, you're doing, can we just put them on our YouTube page? Like, we just need to populate this YouTube page. So I was like, sure, like, please do. You know, like I was, I was working as a copywriter at the time and I was like, if I can get a 2 chains interview on YouTube, that'll be the best thing that's ever happened in my entire pathetic life. Liked him enough to offer me a job. Jack Irwin, uh, shout back out to then, Jack. shout wow. out to Jack. He called me and uh, took a little bit of convincing, but then, yeah, I ended up getting rid of my apartment, breaking my lease, selling all my stuff and I was in New York 30 days later. You said that you needed some convincing to take the job. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, you actually said no to the job yeah. at first, but then it wound up circling back and, and you were convinced and, and you came and I'm glad that you did. So now Hot Ones is starting to come around. I remember the first time you explained the show to me. Uh, I didn't quite get it, like most people. Yeah, yeah. But the main thing that I was confused about was to me, I remember vividly saying, so they finish all 10 wings, but there's no payoff. And you were like, well, yeah, that's kind of the point. Like they go through this super tumultuous thing just to get like 15 seconds of plug time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's it. That's the joke. How difficult at that time was it explaining the show? Cause on paper, it, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, I thought it was like simple enough, but I don't think, you know, and if you looked early on, there's not a lot of people that really got it or like believed in it. And I think that honestly, we never could have built the thing that we built if not for that. I actually got stuck in the studio for the third ever episode of Hot Ones, which was Machine Gun Kelly. Wow. I was in the room for that Hot Ones episode kind of by chance, but I was, I was stuck in there. Uh, and it quickly went from being stuck in there to just being enamored by what was happening and watching MGK just do laps around this yeah. table. And it was, it was so peculiar to me to watch this kind of cerebral reaction to what was happening. So I remember going back to our desks at the end of that day, and I remember turning to you and just being like, bro, I think you got something here with yeah. this show. That was when I knew that we had something too, was that shoot, mm. when he was just cursing everybody out and doing laps around the studio. And like, I was just like, this is so compelling in the room that I know that it's going to translate to the video even that much better. And I've never seen anything like this. Now that the show's lasted long enough for me to kind of be able to look back on some things, the things that I miss about the old days are kind of just traveling around, going from hotel to hotel, staying up till four o'clock in the morning, like having the alarm go off at 6.30, getting all that stuff, going to the studio, trying to execute you to shoot and I feel like I was so naive and delusional we were really building something and I was just bouncing around with Chris all the time now things are special to me because they represent how far we've come I remember back in those days like when people came in they were sort of like what am I doing here what is this freak show that you guys have going on here it was sort of half embarrassing to do the show before and on top of that your set doesn't help you out at all no. I mean you got these black curtains and a, and a table and two chairs and like Dom knows too like we'll, we've popped this thing up in hotel rooms before so it like looks even kind of like sadder and weirder and crazier where we like take the couch and bed and like move them against the wall and just pop up the set inside of a hotel room and then have like a super famous A-list movie star like knock on the door and open it up but I think that the magic of the show and some of my greatest memories and the testaments for doing the show are when you come in with that kind of a setup and the guest sits down and you see on the second or third wing, their shoulders relax and then they fall in, they're hooked. One of the first true signs of success uh, for me was the co-sign from Noriega. Yeah. And because obviously I'm from Left Frank City, <laughs> yeah, Queens. Yeah. Right. And I remember you kind of just showing me DMs like, yo, bro, look who just DM me. It'd be Noriega, you know? Yeah. So who are the DMs now that get you excited? That's what I think is funny about Hot Ones is that, yeah, you'll have like Noriega in the tent and then you'll also have like Burt Kreischer in the tent, Steve-O in the tent, like Tom Segura in the tent. Like that's what I kind of like about it is that it's this clubhouse, this treehouse that's just 
couple of the biggest, craziest personalities in entertainment. And then, yeah, I do see that reflected back at me a little bit. I announced the Bears draft pick a couple weeks ago in Vegas, and I walk to the green room and I see Keegan-Michael Key, first like huge episodes that we ever had. And when I see him, he's, you know, just immediately taken back to that moment. Like, Sean, oh. people to this day still talk to me about that interview. You know, like that, you know, and like doing all that. So I feel like once you leave the show, you're just like forever in the clubhouse because it is that bizarre experience. In this tent, you, you didn't name any of these A-list celebrities. Uh, <laughs> who are some of these people that are I just, I, I just try not to violate trust. Perhaps Glean. a sip of milk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll just, I'll, I'll, plead the, I'll plead the milk. What's had a steeper decline? Uh, Hot Ones recreation attempts? or your invites to media basketball runs? My invites to media basketball runs. I felt like I used to get those all the time. And I don't know what happened, but like they stopped inviting me and it's kind of like, I, I don't even understand it. Do you get invited to those I runs? I do, which is why I brought it up. So I remember the recreation attempts being a, such an integral and pivotal point in the history of Hot Ones because I remember how blatantly you would disrespect back <laughs> the yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like the show is too successful now yeah. for anyone to try to recreate it. Does this still really happen? I have a totally different relationship with it now than I did back when I was wiling. Now, <laughs> the show has gone on long enough, you know, years, hundreds of episodes. I feel like most people who are gonna find it who are or were gonna care about it have already found it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Can you give me the Mount Rushmore of Hot Ones guests who canceled? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'll plead the milk on that because, and I'll tell you why, maybe they'll come back around. Because that's happened before. <laughs> but this before. doesn't say that they can't come around. It, it, it was just a not now. You know, it's not a, a, a never. Sip up. <laughs> When you watch back some of your episodes of Hot Ones, uh, what is an episode or what are some episodes that you look at your performance and you're like, I hate the way I delivered that question or I wish I would have sequenced this better? So early on, I don't think we took the interview as seriously, certainly not as seriously as we do now. So there's uh, an interview with like Anthony Rizzo in season one mm. that I cannot watch because I just cringe at myself so hard. There's only been one time that I can think of that I've felt really let down by you, disappointed Okay, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just go ahead and grab the milk. You really let me down one time in my life okay. uh, as a friend, especially as someone who played the pitching mini game of MVP Baseball yeah. 2005 as much <laughs> as you game. did. Yeah, yeah. To watch you get on the mound and fucking sail this pitch yeah. 30 feet to the right of the well, home it was plate it was just it was Wrigley. just high. It was just high. What happened, dog? I will say that this last summer I did one for the White Sox and it was just it was a perfect redemption. strike. Perfect strike. But here's what happened in my defense. And there is no defense, but here's what happened in my defense. It was like a hundred degrees. It was like the hottest day, but they needed me in the Murakami jacket. jacket. So it I had tight. that Murakami jacket throw. on. They have like 50 people behind home plate. So you run out there to the mound and you're so excited, and then you look over and trying to find the catcher is like trying to find Waldo. You know, there's like a billion people that are right there. And I remember the coach at the time, Madden for the Cubs, he was like, just don't bounce it. So all of those things were in my head. I grip it, brand new baseball. It's very slippery, very smooth, very oh polished surface. So I let it rip and then it just shoo, stayed high and probably like slammed off that like brick backstop. Like it was bad. <laughs> What an excuse that was. It was so illustrious, but I'm not buying any I've of it. I've thought about it a lot. <laughs> Throwing out the first pitch, cardboard cutout at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Being on the celeb cam on the Jumbotron at a hockey game. Yeah. Announcing an NFL pick. I saw you with Benny the Bull. Yep. Topps baseball card. Yeah. Madden commercial. Yeah. Super Bowl 52 pregame show. Are you like Jackie Moon? Like what? Well, I think the only reason I do anything that I do is just to infiltrate the teams that I grew up watching. So, yeah, I feel like I caught them all at this point. Outside of actual accomplishments in the show and whatnot, those are my favorite things that I've done. But I can't express how many times I've heard you tell people 
that your goal in life was to be a game show host. <laughs> and you've done it. Any tangible goal that I've heard you say out of your mouth has been accomplished. And so I'm wondering, have you started to think about the intangible goals? I'm not really a goal person because I've already kind of done five or 10 laps around any expectation I ever had for myself. So it's all house money now. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. My only goal is to make the next episode that we have worth watching for people and then the one after that worth watching for people. What percent of the success of the show do you think is you? What percent of the show do you think is the spice? What percent do you think is like just the current state of media and maybe the decline of mm. what once was? Those things all have kind of an equal share. You know, I think that Hook is unique. It has a quality about it where celebrity is this lifestyle that by definition is unobtainable. But here on this show, you get to see some of the most famous people on the planet eating a wing coated into bomb beyond insanity, going bright red and, and tearing from the eyes. You know, you never see that, especially with images that are, are so carefully protected at all times. I will be as bold enough to say is that I do think it is an excellent interview show in the state of interview shows. Like I really, I really do believe that. I believe that it's more than anyone should ever expect from a chicken wing talk show on YouTube. How much of the continuation of this show do you think is you just chasing the dragon? I think of Hot Ones as catching lightning in a bottle. You know, I really do. And I don't take any of that for granted. Now that I work around people that I love, now that the show is in a place that is just humming, there's nothing else I'd rather do. There's nobody in entertainment that I'd switch places with. Like, I really love what I do, and it feels a very comfortable place for me. And it feels like there's plenty more runway. How much longer do you think it lasts? As long as I can do it and as long as people ha will have me, I think I'll, I'm gonna do it. All right, well, shout out to Dairy Farmers of America for making this happen. Sean, let's, let's toast real quick with milk. I can't think of another time in my whole life that I've toasted with milk, but being that it does all that it does, it helps you cut the heat on hot ones. And, you know, Dairy Farmers of America are also helping cut emissions in our world, I'm down to cheers with milk for that. So <laughs> salute to Dairy Farmers of America for helping us do this interview and uh, thank you for being a good friend. Thank you, Speedy, right back at you, Doc. Thank you for doing this, bro. Give me some love, man. Love you, doggy. Love you too.